Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. My name is Chris Barnes, and I'm Professor of Business Management here at Lakeland. And I'd like to welcome you to, and thank you for coming to the Dworkin and Bernstein Management Lecture Series at Lakeland Community College. We continue our 41st year with tonight's speaker, Alice Demeter from Progressive Insurance. Alice is the IT manager of Enterprise Delivery Practices at Progressive Insurance in Mayfield. She is a 1982 graduate of Lakeland, and she credits her instructors at the college for instilling confidence in her during an era when women were an unusual presence in the information technology industry. Alice's team at Progressive is responsible for the methodology to deliver software solutions to support Progressive departments. Those are the departments that create new products or new services or new ways to deliver the service. And their team, their, their responsibility is to make sure that they have the qu highest quality um, um, software solutions and a timely response so that as soon as someone has an idea, they can respond immediately. Alice has other activities that she's also involved in. She serves on the advisory board for Birthright in Lake County, and she's a member of Lakeland's Alumni and Friends Network, and is a 2013 graduate of Leadership Lake County. Since 1999, she has been a member of the Western Reserve Junior Service League, and recently served as its president from 2013 to 2015. Alice is a longtime resident of Lake County and lives in Menor with her husband, Mike. Please help me welcome Alice Demeter, IT Manager of Enterprise Practices at Progressive Insurance. Chris, thank you so very much for that kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. To start things off, let's check out some individuals who you may recognize right away and others that you may not, and see if you can find a common theme across this group. All right, so I'm in IT, so I should be able to get this to work. All right. First face, very familiar, everyone knows Tom Hanks. This Oscar-winning actor and director was nominated and won the most Academy Awards in 94 and 2004. Known for his stellar performances in movies like Forrest Gump and Saving Private Ryan, Hanks first attended Chabot College in Hayward, California, before transferring to California State University in Sacramento. His audition at a community theater near our Cleveland State, launched his now successful acting and directing career. Here's a face you may not know who this is, but this is Eileen Collins. She is a NASA astronaut and first woman space shuttle commander. With four space flights, she's logged more than 870 hours in space and retired from NASA in 2006. She received an associate's degree in mathematics and science from Corning Community College before continuing on with her education. Here's another familiar face, Mr. George Lucas. Most people know George Lucas as the director of both the Star Wars and Indiana Jones films. He is also the founder and former CEO of Lucasfilm. Before he became a director, Lucas attended Modesto Junior College and studied anthropology during the 60s. Here's a face some of you may know who this is. She's very special to me, a leader and a role model in the community. This is Dr. Jesse Beginsky. Dr. Beginsky is the executive director of Leadership Lake County and earned her doctorate of philosophy in urban education with a specialization in leadership and lifelong learning at Cleveland State. She has a Master's of Arts degree in education and a Bachelor of Arts in Management from Ursuline. 
Dr. Baginski also has an associate's degree from Lakeland and was inducted into the Lakeland Alumni Hall of Fame in 2008. Here's a face you probably should know. So, Dr. Morris Beveridge. Dr. Beveridge is the fifth president of Lakeland, serving since 2001. He holds a Doctor of Management degree from Case Western's Weatherhood School, Weatherhead School of Management, a master's degree in Business Administration, and a Bachelor of Science from Lake Erie College. Dr. Beveridge also has his Associates of Arts degree from Lakeland. He was inducted into the Lakeland Alumni Hall of Fame in 2006. All right, you ready? Here's the last one. And then there's me. So I'm a very proud graduate of Lakeland and also, as, as Chris had shared, an inductee into Lake, Lakeland's Alumni Hall of Fame. So I'm sure you've seen there's a common theme amongst all of these faces up here. There's community college in their background. So why this particular speaker? Well, first of all, for those of you who know Chris Barnes, you just don't say no to Chris Barnes. So that's why I'm standing up in front of you today. And also because hopefully it's going to be beneficial and helpful. Because 35 years ago, I was at quite a crossroads in deciding where I wanted to head in my life. I was 18 years old, without financial or emotional support from my family, Lakeland Community College would become quite a safe haven for me. One that would provide an education in a very marketable field, and one that would be a turning point in my life. Students here each have such a different story to share and are looking for different opportunities. Sitting in this auditorium tonight, you may be right out of high school and starting your undergrad degree before transferring to a four-year university, maybe to save money, improve your transcript, help you to decide what career path to take, or maybe to develop skills that you may have missed in high school. You may be further along in life and looking to change your career path. You may be a lifelong learner who has an ongoing desire for continuing education. Or you may be a single mom or dad who is looking to gain an education to make a better life for your family. Lakeland is made up of students from such a variety of backgrounds, academic histories, and ages. This, this environment is probably much more diverse than any four-year university, and it truly represents the world. So why the speaker? Why me? I'm here tonight to share the journey that I have taken to persevere through personal obstacles and make good choices that have resulted in a long-term successful career. I'm going to share some of the struggles that I went through as a young woman and the choices that I made to not let this sadness define me. I won't be going into explicit detail on this sadness as the main point that I want you to hear is that I did not let this define me and made the choice to not become crippled by having a victim mentality. I will also be sharing the impact that Lakeland had on my life and the successful corporate career that followed. Finally, I will be taking a moment to highlight my focus on giving back to the community in hopes of making a difference where needs are so great. Oops, we're not there yet. Here we go. A very challenging beginning. I was raised in Decatur, Illinois, or we used to say Decatur, Illinois, which was known at the time as the soybean capital of the world. My father was a hard-working mechanical engineer 
who did provide the basics for our family, and I always remember him saying how important it is to earn your keep. While I do attribute a good work ethic to my father, I was not able to derive any loving guidance or support from him. My mother also struggled to demonstrate love and had extreme emotional highs and lows. I do appreciate, though, that she did instill in me a love of the arts and literature, and books became my solace and truly my escape from reality. Neither of my parents came from loving family situations themselves, and this was proliferated into our family. There was little love or nurturing in our household, and the air was filled constantly with fighting, harsh words, negativity, and much belittlement. Divorce resulted when I was 13, and my life turned completely upside down as we lived in a very, very conservative time when divorce was nearly unheard of, and it was truly quite scandalous. Multiple remarriages occurred, and I'll just share that home was not a safe or a stable place to be. My father later transferred with his company to mentor, and I subsequently moved here as well in the middle of my junior year of high school. I had come from such a small school in Decatur and was then enrolled in Mentor High, which was like a city to me. I had never seen so many kids before, and I was very fortunate to get in with a good group of friends as I had always gravitated towards people who came from good family homes. This did help to get me from getting involved with heavy drinking and drug abuse, which was pretty easy to get pulled into. Moving to Mentor was a blessing as it got me out of a very, very destructive environment and gave me a fresh start. My early memories were not bright, but they provided me with an incredible opportunity to learn from my past and to make better choices going forward. Sometimes the best role models are not the ones that you look up to and want to emulate, but rather those that you want to try to be the exact opposite of. I made a personal vow as a teenager to never play the role of a victim and to try to make better choices and to make a positive difference in the lives of others. I just wonder if there's anyone in this room who this may have resonated with you, if this maybe is where you are right now or maybe where you've come from. Whether you may have gone through something similar or are at a crossroads in trying to find the right direction to take. Whether or not you come from some manner of abuse or are in a, in a completely different situation, always remember that you will have choices to make that can impact you long term. Use each experience in life to learn and grow from so that you make good decisions for your future. It gets better. <laughs> A story of success. Upon graduating from Mentor High School in 1981, it was a long time ago, I pursued my lifelong goal of getting an upper education. There was never a question that I would have to put myself through college and paying for a four-year university was just not attainable for me at the time. Back then, there weren't as many options as there are today with the many scholarship programs and available financial funding. I made an appointment here at the registrar's office and I was so blown away at how kind and welcoming everyone was. I enrolled at Lakeland and was put on a payment plan to be able to cover the very reasonable cost of tuition. I originally wanted to attain a degree in accounting, 
but changed direction when I took a computer programming course and became intrigued with this growing profession. I was working at the Great Lakes Mall at the Higby's department store, which is now Dillard's. I was so tall, and I still am, so tall, I actually did a lot of my homework on top of the higher display cabinets in between taking care of customers. The store manager, who is actually sitting out here right now, <laughs> she, she never caught on. <laughs> and she and I did become dear friends many years later through community service. And I had to confess what I had done. <laughs> but I did tell her, though, that I pulled A's and appreciated her unknowing support. <laughs> I graduated in two years and received an associate's degree in information systems. This was pretty rare at the time, as women generally didn't go in to technical professions. It was such a different time back then, and the programming languages that I learned were assembler, RPG, which was report program generator, which was a language that used punch card machines. And I can't believe it. I went out to eBay so you could see what these things look like. But we would, each, each card would have a line of code. And I didn't tell my husband how much these things cost on eBay. <laughs> and they were, it's hard to find, but all this history. But you would have hundreds of these cards in a stack, and you could almost see a grown man cry when his stress level went up if you would happen to drop that, that stack of cards when you're going across campus. Or you're in line, you're loading your, your um, program into the card reader, and you've got a jammed card, and you don't make friends easily when, when you're causing those kind of issues. So after RPG, I learned COBOL, which was widely used by corporations in their mainframe environments, and this made me very marketable. After graduation, I found myself unable to deal with the troubling situations at home. I was very blessed to have my very best friends, Mary and Michelle, who were twin sisters, talk to their parents, who then opened up their home and took me in for a period of time until I was in a position where I could fully support myself. What a turning point this was for me. I was only 20 years of age, and I will forever be thankful to them and to their family for their loving act of kindness and their dear, kind hearts. Soon afterwards, I was able to secure an entry-level programmer position in Bailey Controls in Wycliffe, now called Babcock Wilcox. IT management at Bailey found Lakeland students to be viable candidates to hire due to the foundational, hands-on programming skills that were built. Because of the large volume of programs that I had written in my IT courses, I felt well prepared to join the company. Lakeland provided me with the tools and techniques and the fundamentals that I needed to be productive in the corporate world. During this time, I got married at 23 years old, and we had our daughter, Lauren. I kept in mind that vow that I had made to myself years before to learn from my childhood and to try to make better choices and to be a consistently loving parent to my only child. My technical career continued as I joined other large IT shops across the Cleveland area and moved into more senior and lead level programming positions. From programming, I moved into project management and ran multi-million dollar software development projects. During this time, I was employed at KeyBank, Key Bank, downtown Cleveland. And in my personal life, my marriage of 10 years had become very rocky. I know that it takes two, but I can honestly say that I was not mentally nor spiritually prepared for the responsibilities and commitment needed to make a successful marriage. 
I could capably run a technology project, but I hadn't built the skills needed in my personal life. Divorce resulted, but this is where there is still time to make good decisions. Lauren's father and I agreed that our daughter would be our top priority and that we would always have her best interests at heart. We kept any disagreements out of earshot and I tried to be respectful when talking about her dad. I knew from experience how important it is for a little girl to see her daddy as a hero and I am proud to say that he and I have a partnership today that is based on the love that we share for our daughter who has grown into an accomplished and talented young woman who knows how very loved and supported she is by both of her parents. I continued my career at Key and a few years later, another quick personal note, found the love of my life and remarried. We have a strong marriage that is based on love and respect, and we share a solid foundation in our faith, which has helped us to persevere through life's challenges over the last 18 years. About 10 years ago, I took a project management position at Progressive Insurance in Mayfield Heights. A program was in progress which was comprised of dozens of individual projects with the goal of completely rewriting Progressive's policy processing system. It was like giving a heart transplant to the corporation. The budget at the time was estimated at over $400 million in labor alone, in addition to hardware acquisition. The scope was extensive as nearly every software application across the company was impacted in some capacity. I didn't have an undergrad degree, which is very important to progressive. Generally, you'll see your undergrads, your masters. So, and I did not have that. But I had taken the initiative to get my certification as a project management professional. You may know that as being a PMP. This is widely recognized in the industry. This certification, along with my years of IT experience, got me an interview, and I was so excited to be offered a position to join the company. Over the last nine years, I had been in the position of an IT manager at Progressive with direct reports upwards of 30 IT professionals. I can sincerely say that my career has resulted due to the education that I received at Lakeland, along with a good amount of hard work and initiative and taking personal accountability, which gave me quite a jump start into the technology field. A main area of my responsibility at Progressive is that of talent management, which involves supporting the career development of my team members while also ensuring that the goals and objectives of the company are met. I do not accept my team members demonstrating a victim mentality and coach and mentor them to take ownership of situations and determine, determine how they can make a positive impact. Many years ago, I received a presentation from a well-respected leader in IT that resonated with me and has become the framework for how I try to lead. Here are the three main points. Deliver successfully. Advance the capabilities of the organization. In other words, leave things even a little better than when you found them and advance the talents of the organization, support and help and career coach others. So deliver successfully. This is where you have got to understand your own strengths and areas of opportunity. Always have a plan, but know there will be times when you're just not going to meet your goals. How you react in these types of situations will demonstrate your character 
and integrity. I remember when I was a new manager and our management team had a shared objective to deliver a project, this is within that, um, that main program that I joined the company with, by a certain date and within an approved budget. Well, needless to say, the scope of the effort expanded, problems ensued, and goals were not met. This resulted in a low proficiency rating on each of our annual performance valuations. I had always received positive ratings before, and I did have a reputation of delivering successfully. Now I had this black mark on my record, and it really initially hit me pretty hard. Human nature is to be defensive, point fingers, and cry foul. Plus, I had been raised in an environment at my home where criticism was nonstop, and I would do anything to stop the negativity. What helped me was to take a breath, step back, and really assess the situation. When I reviewed the, with the objectives that had been established, I could see where I personally had misstepped. I course corrected and planned out what I needed to do going forward, which involved better communication, working more closely with the rest of the management team to make certain that this would not happen again. Using this type of approach helped to build stronger working relationships with my peers and with our teams, which then resulted in a successful delivery down the road. Taking personal accountability is not always easy, but it will differentiate you from others. You own how you need how you react to tough and stressful situations, and you have the power to avoid heading into a downward spi spiral. When you hit rock bottom, there's absolutely no way to go but up. One of my favorite books on the subject is QBQ, The Question Behind the Question, Practicing Personal Accountability at Work and in Life by John Miller. It's a quick little read that you can finish in a few hours, but the messaging is pretty powerful. A key concept is that personal accountability is about each of us holding ourselves accountable for our own thinking and the behaviors and the results that they produce. I knew from the sadness that I had experienced growing up that I couldn't change other people and I couldn't always control the circumstances, but I could control the way I reacted and how I needed to focus my energy on being productive and choose to be happy and not blame, complain, procrastinate, and feel entitled. We always have a choice, always. I believe that to deliver successfully, you have to ask yourselves, these types of questions. How can I be a better leader, a better parent, a better spouse, a better friend, a better employee? What can I do to show that I care? What can I do right now to make a difference? This is how taking personal accountability changes the world one choice at a time. Here's a quote, you may have heard different variations of this before, but, but it is very, very true. Next point, advance the capabilities of the organization. Leave things a little better than when you found them. When you're looking for a job, it is very important to do your homework and find out what the company is all about and if it is a place where you feel that you can make a difference. When I researched Progressive, I couldn't believe how large the corporation is, and it's right here in our own backyard in Mayfield Village. Currently, it's the fourth largest auto insurer in the United States, with over 13 million policies in force and over 20 billion in premiums. 
On the Fortune 500 listing, it ranks at number 153. We have over 26,000 employees at Progressive, and there are 3,000 in IT alone. I was all, also impressed with the core values, which are followed without exception. Progressive's vision is to reduce the human trauma and economic costs associated with automobile accidents. We do this by providing our customers with services designed to help them get their lives back in order as quickly as possible. Integrity. We revere honesty. We adhere to high ethical standards, provide timely, accurate, and complete financial reporting, encourage disclosing bad news, and welcome disagreement. The golden rule. We respect all people value the differences among them, and deal with them in a way that we want to, would want to be dealt with. Our objectives, we strive to communicate clearly progressives, ambitious objectives, and our pe per people's personal and team objectives, and we evaluate performance based upon them. Excellence, we strive constantly to improve in order to meet and exceed the highest expectations of our customers, our, our agents, our shareholders, and our people. We teach and encourage our people to improve performance and to reduce the cost of what they do for customers. And we base their re rewards on results and promote on ability. And then finally, profit. We seek to earn a profit by offering consumers products and services they want. Profit is how the free enterprise system motivates investment and rewards companies that consistently add value. Progressive stands behind these values, and this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to work there. This is the kind of company that I feel very proud to be a part of. The culture is one that recognizes and supports creativity and innovation. On our website, you'll find that we celebrate the person you are, the ideas you bring, and the energy that you invest. There's a reason that people have worked there for years and years and years. It's because Progressive is a special type of place. We're taking chances and pushing innovation is a way of life where you don't stop until a job is finished, where hard work is celebrated and rewarded, where you can meet interesting people who can teach you amazing things. So you probably have seen Flo, our quirky and endearing spokesperson on our progressive commercials or advertising via social media. So I just want to share a very quick little video on how our marketing team is showing our core values and drive to advance our capabilities to truly take care of our customers. An apron. You probably think there are a million things out there that are more progressive but not us. Because we know that progress happens not with some dramatic flourish, but quietly, anonymously, over years at a time. It's not always glamorous, but showing up every day and doing the job taking your apron off until it's done. That's pretty much the most progressive thing there is. It's a pretty special company, and I really think that quick video clip really shares the heart of what that large corporation is all about. So the, the final piece of my leadership framework, advance the talents of the organization or in other words, develop others. 
This is the area of my leadership framework that is nearest and dearest to my heart. I find no greater job satisfaction than seeing my team members be successful and grow in their career development. I've done a substantial amount of interviewing over the years, including college recruiting. I will generally have our technical experts included on the interview team to confirm the level of skills and capabilities that the candidate has on their resume. What I'm looking for is more around team fit and how the candidate would assimilate into the company and within the team dynamics. Building the right team and having the right candidates are critical for the success of the organization and very costly when the wrong hiring decision is made. Here are some of the competencies that I look for the candidate to provide solid examples of their ability to build positive working relationships, to communicate effectively, to demonstrate good decision making, to accept constructive feedback and take appropriate action, to deliver successfully, and show a desire to grow in their own personal development. Most companies use what is called targeted selection or behavior-based selection, and responses need to be in a STAR format. You may have heard, heard that acronym before. So situation or task, the action that you took, and the result or the outcome that was achieved. When you're prepping for interviews, make certain to take time to prepare beforehand and have an inventory of examples in the STAR format. Giving a general example, such as I'm just a great team player, without having any substance behind it, it's really not going to help you much. Could just mean you are just a super sweet person who brings bagels into the team on Fridays, but can you deliver? That's what you need to share. You may want to put something together like an Excel spreadsheet to detail out and manage your examples. Make certain to have examples for situations that were positive and also negative. When I'm interviewing, I'll ask questions about sharing times when things don't go as planned or when the person had to deal with a difficult coworker or when they were under a lot of stress. Personal accountability will generally shine through or not. Always have a list of questions to pull from and to ask at the end of an interview. This will show your interest in the position and in the company. I always like to ask this type of question when the interview is wrapping up. Tell me what differentiates you from all of the other candidates. I personally have what I call my platform, or you may have heard it called an elevator speech, to use to recap why I would be the right fit for the position. Just three to five sentences are needed that share your unique combination of skills and experience. These are key points that you would want to resonate with the interviewer after you have finished meeting with that person. I do want to share how important it has been for me to have mentors and role models throughout my career. Many of them are here with me tonight, and I want to thank each of my dear friends and colleagues who have been there for me throughout the years, providing their support and sharing their wisdom and setting such a wonderful example of leadership. I really encourage each of you to find someone who you look up to in your field or who can be a trusted advisor to talk to, someone with wisdom and experience to help provide honest coaching. When I was at Lakeland, I had a professor who was instrumental to me as a student. Professor Judy Mazio was an amazing instructor. 
I was saddened to hear that Mrs. Mazio, or Maz, as we all affectionately called her, had passed away in 2010 after a battle with cancer. What a legacy she has left behind. I found out about her passing as a result of contacting Lakeland a few years back to try to reach her. I never forgot her and wanted to get back in touch and thank her for providing me with such a solid foundation in which to begin my adventure in the technology field. Maz was a gifted teacher and held our class to a high standard of delivering quality programming. She had an extensive corporate career herself and brought real world business scenarios into the classroom where she would have us assess and develop technical solutions for actual case studies. Because of Mrs. Mazio and Lakeland Community College, I was well prepared to secure that rookie programmer position at Bailey upon graduating 35 years ago. She was a leader and a role model to me, and I truly appreciate Lakeland for the high caliber instruction that I received and for the successful career that resulted. This is truly one of my very favorite quotes by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and this is the essence of how I try to lead. To leave the world a better place, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. Over the years since graduating from Lakeland, it has been an important focus of mine to give back to the community by serving on local nonprofit boards, supporting fundraising efforts for worthy causes such as birthright, helping to raise awareness and celebrate how incredible our local YMCA has been over the last 150 years doing such wonderful service to our community and also taking leadership positions such as being the past president of the Western Reserve Junior Service League. I still can't believe that I was inducted into the Lakeland Alumni Hall of Fame and I'm also a member of the Lakeland Alumni and Friends Network and a proud graduate at the Leadership Lake County program. I have a personal commitment to provide mentoring to the younger generation, especially to help prepare students such as yourselves to begin your journey into the workforce. Helping others to realize their potential is a passion of mine, and I would like to give back in this capacity in gratitude to Lakeland for all that, when I, that was done when I was in my earlier days of finding my way in this world. I do want to share just a few references. These are personal references of mine that I lean to, lean on. So QBQ, that's the one that I had mentioned before. Lynchpin, another good one. Are you indispensable? Here's a very, very one. You may know this one already by Dale Carnegie how to win friends and influence people. Emotional intelligence, there are so many great books about emotional intelligence. I like this one, it's got an easy, quick little online assessment to really help you understand how you see yourself and how others see you and action planning around areas you need to work on. Right in the middle is the Bible. This is my personal leadership reference book. It's my go-to book on relationship building, making the right decisions, making the right choices. The Truth About You, this is another good little read, trying to help you understand how to maximize your strengths. Strengths Finder 2.0, another one with an online assessment. Um, it helps you identify your top strengths and strategies for applying them. The Fred Factor, another quick little fun read, but it really shares about having passion in your work and how that can help turn the ordinary 
into the extraordinary. So before I take, take questions, I really want to say what an honor it was to speak to you tonight. And I wish each of you much, much success in your future. Please take advantage of all that Lakeland has to offer. Life can be so messy and so complex. And my, my hope is that through my message, you heard that it was a message of hope and perseverance that led to a successful career and a fulfilling personal life. Chris Barnes has my contact information. If you would like to keep in touch and discuss your career goals or maybe share any challenges that you may be personally facing. See how you may also be able to leverage my leadership framework of delivering successfully, advancing the capabilities of the organization, leaving things a little better than where you found them, and advancing the talents of an organization how you can help to support and develop others. My hope is that there were aspects of my message that resonated with you, and you can see how you can learn from every situation and make good decisions that will set the stage for a successful future. And so what I've tried to share is that life is an adventure. Dare it, a duty, perform it, an opportunity, take it, a journey, complete it, a promise, fulfill it, a puzzle, solve it, and a goal, achieve it. Thank you so much. So we have a few minutes for questions. Does anyone have a question? Not my husband. <laughs> yes. You know, that, that's an amazing question. And as I've moved into IT management, I've gotten more insight into compensation. And uh, what I can say is that I personally never experienced that. I think I was just sort of a rare commodity, commodity being a woman in this technical field. And I truly can say that I always felt that I was really fairly well compensated. I remember when I got one of my first positions, and I can share the numbers, it was so, so many years ago, but I was making 18,000 a year. I felt so rich. I'm like, I'm only shopping at Heinen's. <laughs> I was so excited. So for me personally, I, I have not felt that. I can tell you corporations such as Progressive take such due diligence to really value diversity at a company, and I just haven't seen issues with unequal pay. But I know that's reality for many across the country. I just personally haven't had to deal with that. Good question. Now, I don't have percentages for you. I can tell you some of the job families that I have managed actually were very female. You know, it's very much a higher percentage of women. There were times when I was managing, you know, upwards of 30, 30 team members, and I would say 65% were women. Could be the type of profession it was. This was, it's a profession where it's a business analyst. They play a liaison between our business and our inf information technology teams. So I didn't see it there. What is interesting though, I do see more men coming in through our college program. And I know that our college recruiting team is very well aware of that, making sure that we are looking you know, at all types of talent. So.
This is where my husband may need to answer this because he's had to listen to this over the many years. I have toyed with it over and over. The thing is that undergrad, there was a two-year degree, got me such a good start, but it's a different time right now. So now I've got the two-year degree plus certification and I am fairly well compensated. So for me personally to go back, I don't know if it would help a lot with my career, but it may be a personal goal that I still may want to do. So, but I have thought about it um, many, many times. I was taller. <laughs> so, yes. Do you know, I, I think a lot of it, um, I had come from such a struggle um, as far as my background. So, and not having, it's, it's so different with how I've raised my daughter. She has come from such a family where she's so supportive. And she's told, you know, she's wonderful and talented, so much support, and I did not have that. So I just knew that if I didn't work, I wasn't going to eat. So I did everything I could as far as just whether it was studying, staying on top of, you know, in, you know what was going on in the industry, showing how I could persevere through obstacles. Those kind of things helped set me apart. Just, just showing the integrity and the hard work ethic, you know, having examples around that, it, it did help. But I knew I did not um, really have a family to support me, behind, you know, behind me. So I had, I had to make this work. There, there was just, there was no question. So, thank you. We, we have to be, there's so many emerging technologies. Right now, major focus is on mobile and also speed to delivery. So you'll hear about, um, like, I don't know how frequently, like Google will release, you know, do releases. It's all about speed to market. That darn Geico gets in a, they're, they're, it's just, they run um, pretty, they run a pretty lean shop. So that's how can we get products to our customers as quickly as possible and with good quality. So that's, that's the big um, focus right now. How can we have an environment where we can, can continuously deliver? And it gets, it's pretty complex because you've got to have environments ready to do that. So you can be ready, boom, go into production. And there's a lot, especially in a large corporation. So that's, that's one, of the, one, one of the things. How do you stay ahead of your competitors and deliver quickly into the marketplace? Good question. Yes. I would say in the early days, probably confidence, because I, I had so much, so much negativity going on in my head from just you know growing up in just a very sad environment. So it, it's really trying to get past that and seeing, okay, I have accomplished this and how to tell that story. But it, it took quite a while, and that's that's also what resulted in that, in that um, when I got divorced. You know, I just was not prepared to, to have those kind of responsibilities. So, so it was a long journey. That, that is such an awesome question. If you ever got the opportunity, even just to experience Progressive, the culture is almost like an employee itself. I mean, it is such a culture of focusing on the employees. It's a culture of learning. Like even we have campuses, it's really, you almost have like that university type of feel. A lot of focus on personal development. And you see a lot of what Peter B. did to, he, he knew. You hear stories from, some, from um, folks at the company who've been there for decades, and he was like family. I mean, he, he would know people personally, 
And I do, it's hard then when the company gets so large to keep that, you know, small company type of feel, but it is, but it is definitely um, a culture that he helped to instill and one that Progress was really proud of. Those core values are exactly what he stood for and those have, you know, those have lasted decade after decade.